Good evening, good evening, good evening. All right, we're back again. Sorry about that, guys. Just a bit of technical difficulties on our side, uh, but we've got that all sorted now. This should be running 100%. Welcome to Backtrack's very new uh, podcast. We call it No Sweat. So good evening, and uh, hope you guys are going to have a good time with us. I've got my man with me over here, Erwin Schmidt, a.k.a. Smitty. Smitty, say hi to the people. Yeah, how's it, guys? Sorry about that. Um, we've got it all sorted. We won't be on, on YouTube at this point, but um, we'll get that sorted. We used the new program. I'm not going to name it, but please don't use that. <laughs> um, it, it's simulcasting, but um, we, we got it figured out now, so let's... Uh, Stop it. Get, get some help. <laughs> All right, guys, so welcome to you all. We are live on Facebook. Uh, this is uh, No Sweat. Let me run you through the program one more time so that you know exactly what we're going to be doing today. Uh, Hopefully the last time. This is the last time. <laughs> uh, we're going to be running through the topic for today, which is my precious. Yeah, definitely my precious. And then uh, we, we, you'll, like, you'll know exactly what we mean with that uh, topic. We're going to cover two articles, as I said. <laughs> Uh, we're going to cover two articles, essay nudges into the right direction with Michelle qualification, as well as the other article, which is these five cool things make sacrifices um, of being an Olympian worth it. And then we're going to play a game, uh, which is called Know Your Records. I'm going to be testing you, Smitty, and everybody who's listening in. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll delve or dive into the Olympic squad as well. Um, that's going to be an interesting one. And then, yeah, we'll wrap it up from there. <laughs> that Olympic squad is going to be a pretty interesting a couple of names there. It's on the fringe. Quite excited, but let's let's have a look at that. So, all right, Dems, let's let's start. All right. So, welcome one more time. If you've just joined us, we're going to start. So, the the first thing we're going to be uh, touching on or, and uh, dealing with is the article. You wrote an amazing article. Well, you you wrote two, but uh, this one is obviously much more. Uh, interesting, you know, you said ASA nudges into the right direction with Michelle's qualification. I mean, anybody who's been uh, watching or following his journey, precious Michelle, it's a fantastic journey. I mean, if you look at the amount of uh, 5,000 Ziren this year and almost almost 10, you know, he ran, I think, a total of uh, seven races um, with with three of them coming um, over the, the past uh, month in, in, in June. So, you know, and obviously ASA were fighting to make sure that he qualifies and gets that qualifier as well. So, amazing topic. What, what were you thinking when you, when, you, when you came up with that topic and that article as well? Well, firstly, I don't think thing, things up. Um, so, I, le- I literally, if you, you followed uh, Michelle's journey, seeing him um, run at nationals. Yeah. Um, he didn't qualify there. Mm. Um, that's like your biggest stage in South Africa with the best competition you can get here. Yeah. And he, he obliterated everyone. He was there running himself. And I think at a stage he was doing sub 30 seconds, 200s. Um, and to qualify, it's every, every lap's around about 62, 61, 62 seconds. Um, and then we had the classic qualifier, uh-huh. um, the backtrack event um, with, with Newton sponsoring that. We had that um, in Durban. Yeah. And boy, the stage was set there for him to qualify. Um, you had Daniel Abeno as, as well running. Um, yeah. One of the top, uh, top class runners yeah, in the he, world. He finished second at, uh, at the, uh, the Kenyan trials, huh? Yeah, you see. So he qualified. Man. So he's, uh, I think the quickest 10K runner currently this year, or was. Mm. Um, so he was um, running with Michelle. So that was great competition. Yeah. And then you hit a negative six or negative seven headwind. Mm. Um, but it's more like a crosswind, so it affected you for pretty much 250 meters of the race, like the worst winds you can. Yeah. It literally pushed you from one side into the track and the other side out of it. Um, yeah, so th- that was difficult, and he missed it by a mere nine seconds, mm. but ran a 55-second last lap. That's when I, I saw this, like, this guy can actually do it. Um, Ibenio went, went on 61, 62, 61, 62, 61, 62, 61, 62. So he, he literally um, sit, sat on, on the race pace and, and, he, and he did a great job by qualifying there in tough conditions. So he's definitely a sub-13 um, minute runner. Yeah, I don't definitely. know what his Kenya trials were. Mm. Um, yeah, so j- continuing that j- journey as ASA, um, 
James Miller was also appointed at that time. Um, they did the Cape Town race for him as well with the Western Province distance, distance meet, um, which ASA hel helped um, host. Got the guys down there too. Um, he, they indicated that Alroy was going to pace that. Mm -hmm. um, not sure why Alroy didn't, um, but he came near five seconds, I think. Yeah, yeah. On his ace. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I felt sorry for him there because that, that was literally um, just somebody need, that needed to push it through. Yeah. Um, and then finally, we had um, the race now on the last day, the 29th. And how's that for... How's last, that for last minute. <laughs> how's that for, for breaking in this? I, yes. I, think I, I can probably find a find a clip of how, how that um, ended up. I saw a couple on Facebook. So we'll see if we can't can bring um, something up that someone someone's posted. But how amazing is that? I mean, we're talking about qualifying on the last day yeah, last that's moment that's crazy that's brilliant i mean yeah. you could see everybody on, on the day was so excited the guys are carrying him on the shoulders he's like you know um everybody's so excited to see how we did with that i mean and that's what we need you know we need more and more south africans uh, working together obviously he, he was working with uh, um the likes of uh, ryan Patele, who was helping with pacing i mean these are both uh, former sa <laughs> Uh, champions so amazing stuff so, yeah, so i've got I, i've got something quick and if you can go to to my screen here um so this is uh peter kukumur um thanks for publishing this he, yeah. he probably was there but the, here's the last hundred meter of the Michelle race and this is literally him again on his ice um, trying to quali qualify the, the, it's not him crossing right now but it's him next but have a look at how the people how it started the people <laughs> <laughs> and then if i'm not wrong you, we, you can have a look we can have a look here you somewhere. made it happen you made it happen you quite. made it happen, <laughs> you made um, it happen. The people lifting look at them that. to their shoulders so that, come on. that was pretty cool but this is what what, what athletics is about um, come on they're really these moments so big ups to him but as well as um athletic south africa not not given given up on the dude um, literally pushing for the opportunity, and if you, uh, the whole article is about that exactly. That, um, uh, what do athletes want out of the ath athletics South Africa? Yes, they're a governing body or a federation that looks after the sport, but it's not only making decisions that's best for the sport, um, but also making decisions that's best for the athletes too, identifying the talent, because um, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, and if they didn't go this route of, of hosting this for him, he. He wouldn't have qualified. Yeah. I think the sound might be muted. So, um, anyway, but yeah. Absolutely. I mean, th th that's what it's, it's all about. I mean, having um, Michelle qualify, you know, and the, the, just those images of, of, of everybody, you know, being excited and seeing him do that. Uh, that's what it's about, you know. It's about uh, those moments, South Africans coming together and just enjoying... Um, you know, it's such a tough sport, you know, athletics is an individual sport, uh, it's seen as most of the time, but you see athletes who run uh, different um, events, different competitions and so on, um, come together and work together towards that goal. I mean, big ups to ASA, you know, putting in the effort. I mean, hosting meetings is not, uh, it's not free. Uh, there's a lot of uh, work that goes into making sure these meetings are hosted and go on. Uh, so... So big ups to them, you know, carrying that and making sure that he qualifies. I mean, it's a, it's a, it just, it's a story that ends well because he ends up getting that qualifier, you know. Yeah, that's what it's about. At the end of the day. Absolutely. That's pretty much what, what it's about. No, I mean, I think it's an it's an amazing article. You know, it covers the the importance of, um, of of, of what I mean. You know, we always said by athletes, uh, for athletes, and we've seen that uh, the president. Uh, Muloy has, has has taken almost the same approach towards athletics as well. You know, bringing bringing those news to the people, making sure that the athletes are seen, giving them opportunity. Because opportunity is what everything uh, is about, and that's what makes the athletes, you know, reach their dreams. So it's a dream come true for for Precious. So big ups to him uh, for fighting through for that. Yeah, cool man. Yeah, so he's he's there. Uh, let's see how he do how he does at uh, the Olympics. Perhaps he'll. A go sub 13 i'd like to see that yeah that would be amazing for uh, distance running here in uh south africa mm. so it's it's amazing i mean like i said you running uh, a total of seven races 
Uh, with three of them being in one month, you know, you usually see people run one and then they back off. But to run three weekends back to back, making sure that you get that qualifier. You know, at some point, even if you look, looked on his social media, he said, you know what, that's the end of my season because uh, he knew the races were, were done, you know. And they, they brought him back one more time for this race. So for him to, to do that after, you know, psychologically shutting down the season, uh, I mean, that, that, that's, that, that, that shows the character of, of this athlete mm -hmm. and uh, the type of person. That's why, I mean, we, you know, we say my precious, precious Mashele uh, is a definitely a gem for South Africa. And yeah, he's made South Africa proud by doing that. Yeah, cool, man. All right, Thames. What do you got in store for us next? All right. So th this one is, is, I like this one. Um, you know, I like the, this topic over here, which says uh, these f uh, five cool things make the sacrifices to be an Olympic squad worth it. It's, 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 it's interesting because, you know, we all, besides, you know, representing your country and all those things that are conventional and we all know about, there are also these uh, small things, these five cool things um that you mentioned here yeah, which make the athletes you know want to qualify for olympics it's uh we'll run through all those uh, topics as well but uh just before i jump into that what was your reasoning behind this <laughs> my reasoning yeah okay, so well, i've done the research i asked a couple of guys and and yet um, writing these articles it's not not always my thought so this this definitely isn't based on my thought i, yeah, yeah, I yeah. asked a bunch of olympians what what is well, what makes it cool? You can ask them, um, what makes it worth it? Mm. And they, they'll all tell you, it's like, um, you, you get to run for you or represent your country at the biggest stage in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, the biggest stage on, on athletics. Um, so I, I just changed it up and said, what makes it cool? What makes it worth it? What's, what else is there? And then um, these were the five topics. Funny enough, the tattoos came up almost with every <laughs> single single one of them. Some yeah. didn't even have a tattoo, and they they considered having one as well. Wow. Um, yeah. So that that's what it is. You can you can list them down. And yeah. Let me go through it. them. Let me go through them. So mm -hmm. there's five of them. Uh, at number one uh, mm -hmm. is the opening ceremony walk. Come yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the reference you made to to Mr. Bean at uh, the 2012 Olympics. Bing, 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 yeah, he bing, was bing, hitting bing, chariots of fire. Oh man, yeah, I, I loved that cool. moment. That that was like uh, it was so entertaining. It was somebody we loved so much, and all of a sudden here's the Olympic stage, and uh, you know the, the the Great Britain or the English uh, see him as such an icon. To you know we never expected that. And you usually see the likes of big artists, Beyonce, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But Mr. Bean on your screen, <laughs> uh, bringing some comedy. But also, you know, I think the, the London Olympics was probably one of the, the best uh, hosted or held Olympics. Uh, how, can you, how can you even say that one is the best, though? That's a one-off. Like, one-off. Uh, no. I, I, I don't know. I can't, <laughs> like, everything's got something special. And yeah, someone yeah. does something really terrible, I guess they won't be, be a part of it. So each country obviously competes against the other in terms yeah, yeah, of what yeah. they can do. Um, but I, you, I don't think you can really say one one Olympics is better than the other. I mean, it's about the athletes whether they be able or whether they able to participate, mm. were, were they happy, um, um, where they lived at, and was the world able to see it? Yeah, I think yeah. Those are the, the most important points in those. Um, but if you ha think of the Beijing Olympics, um, that was one massive, explosive. yeah, that was one massive um, opening ceremony. And then each country brings it, brings out a little bit of the tradition, a little bit of what they they do in each of these. Mm. Um, yeah, so the opening ceremony, if uh, I would say, if uh, unless you could Kuto, um, that's almost done five, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, four, yeah, four. <laughs> <laughs> he could probably say, okay, this was better than the other one, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, that that Olympics would always um, get stuck in your heart. Leon did the London one. Yeah. Obviously, that would be be a highlight highlight of his life. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's, that that's pretty much my thought. Um. If you speak you speak to the guys that have done multiple of them. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Th that's pretty much the point that I, um, that I make. Um. Then they can crack the whip. <laughs> Yay! Hey. Yeah, they can crack the whip on it and <laughs> <laughs> try and uh, try and tell us what, what's different. But I, I look forward to do, see what Japan's going to do for this. They they had a pretty cool rugby World Cup. Mm. Um, I, I look forward to see what Tokyo's got got to do. And um, yeah, hopefully you know Asia. 
And uh, um, you definitely don't end up in China. Don't get lost. Japan. Japan. Uh, hello, I need to speak to somebody <laughs> who can speak a Chinese. <laughs> yeah. um, make sure that you're in Japan if you want to go watch the, the Olympics. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Okay, uh, next up. All right, next up, the next um, cool thing about uh, which makes the, the sacrifice of being an Olympian worth it is receiving your national Olympic kit. Yeah, your colors. Your colors. Uh, 2016 will always be a talking point. You know, you know they can say whatever they want to say about those colors. Those colors produced some amazing performances in 2016 uh, in Rio. Come on, world records, Smitty. The yeah. Cobra was striking in the 800. Yeah, man, uh, that was uh, quite memorable. We got, we ended up having a lot of um, a lot of medals in that that Olympics. A couple of couple of golds. Absolutely. Yeah. So so they are th- there's the one of the, obviously one of those uh, topics is f- so important. I mean, the national kit. Um, wh- wh- what are the athletes? You know, I know you spoke to some of the athletes, or oh, you got a bit of a feel around the national Olympic kit. Why is this uh, top one of the top five uh, things? Probably because the previous kits weren't pretty cool. So if you if you think about okay, I'm I'm an Olympian. Um, I'm going to represent my country. What's the first thing you think about before you think about a medal? What am I going to wear? What I'm going to wear. You know where you're going. What yeah. am I wearing? Yeah. And how does that compare to everyone else? Um, I mean, there, there's been a mass disappointment in the previous year's kit. Um, mm. That I can say out of research. Um, I'm, I'm not even going to lift my opinion on it. Um, but for the guy saying 361, what was that? Um, and then the Urka kit, what, what was that, that as well? Um, and not really... Um, honing in on the traditions of of South Africa, um, this year we've got a or oh, this Olympics we got maxed, uh, which is pretty cool. We've got some of their kit coming in. I think I can show show some of it. Um, let's just see if I can find it. And um, everyone can get, well, you guys can comment if you if you want to comment. Let's have a look here um, to where the article is. But yeah, Max doing the kit, they got a couple of designers, local designers, to, to actually work on it. Mm. Um, and just from the outset, I haven't heard anything negative um, come from the athletes um, that I've asked about it. Everyone seem, seems to be quite excited. It's actually on backtrack, I believe. They're quite, quite excited about competing in this kit. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's, 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 it, it might not seem like such a significant thing because you think... You know, you just have to go there and run. But, I mean, uh, it's something that is uh, special to the athletes. You know, they want to be seen in their latest threads. They want to be uh, represent it's Africa in a way where, you know, I mean, look at the, the, the yellow, the green, uh, the gold of South Africa, the colors. Those That's popping. You know, you can see the legend there. Khotso Mukwena is also in the mix. Uh, he was also at the Olympic Day launch. Um, and yeah, that's what, the, you know, all the athletes want to be seen in those colors. And I mean, that's, that's what, um, the world sees, you know, when they see your kit, they see your country. That's what is the first impression. And then obviously the characters and so on, uh, comes in after that. Yeah, man. Um, and so, yeah, my thought on the Max kit, it's pretty cool. So we'll see what the athletes hear once they received it or what they say, what we hear from the athletes. Um, but from the outside, just from the way it looks, it looks it looks pretty decent. Mm. It's good, good that it's made in South Africa too. Absolutely, South African brand, South African athletes, South African team, and I mean it looks um, just from basically just uh, seeing how it looks, it looks uh, much cleaner and neater than it did in uh, the previous uh, few, maybe even few years, you know. Um, uh, but even we did a bit of a poll as well on uh, on uh, on Instagram. And the 1996 kit was, uh, or the, the tracksuit was one of the, the, the favorites as well, you know, uh, those bright colors that came in. Uh, we've had also the 1992 uh, uh, kit, which was amazing. So it, it's, always, it's always interesting to see um, how the people feel about the kit and how they feel like they're being represented to the rest of the world. Yeah, man. All right. Should I move on to topic number three? Yeah, you can. All right. So this one is very interesting and it's, it's quite new. Um, it's the the Oli O L Y uh, behind your name. So once once you've competed, obviously this becomes uh, some type of, si- of signature behind your name, uh, uh, Irwin. Uh, you want to explain on that? Yeah, it's a, like if you think about it, uh, two you got about four years, 
and between the Olympics to qualify for an Olympics. And there's a lot of dedication that goes behind that. People don't see the hard work. Um, so, yeah, what the um, World of Olympics Association or World Olympians Association, they come up with the early behind it. It's similar to a doctorate or master's or, a, or well, they say actually similar to a PhD. Wow. That these guys get to to use. Um, however, you can't just, okay, you're an Olympian now and you competed. I'm, I'm just going to use it. Um, Quentin, if you can share my screen just so, for a sec so people can see. You can't just go go out and, and use that. Mm. Um, you, there's also a code of conduct and ethics. Um, so it's a way of, of life um, afterwards as an Olympian. Um, so they're hoping that this would create um, better careers for the athletes afterwards. Because obviously, if you um, competing in the Olympics, um, to some extent, you sacrifice your... your yeah. Um, work career as mm. well there's a lot you put sick in um, and some guys family as well so if you didn't run how far could you have advanced mm. um, so hopefully this gives credibility to um, the athletes post athletics careers that's that's what they aim to do and this i think um this was a uh, initiative from patrick singleton mm. um, he's a guy that also competed in three olympics wow um yeah so that's what what he's trying to do and i, and I i've seen a couple of guys already use use it um so let's see how that that goes in in the business world and keep a close uh, eye on that yeah from, from what i've seen i mean i think i mean it's definitely well deserved i mean to become to be an olympian I man uh, you, you you know we had uh, mark mandel on back chat and he talks about the sacrifices of you know being away from family you know uh, his, his his child uh birth you know the risk of missing on out on on those precious uh, moments, you know, just to be able to say uh, I'm an Olympian, uh, I'm representing my country. Th these are almost like, um, you know, like soldiers, you know, they, they go on, they put on the, the kit, they go out there into war and they represent the country with everything that they have. So, I mean, it's it's a big mandate. And to be able to finish your career and be able to say, listen, you know, if you need somebody who is dedicated to a cause and who is goal oriented, I'm that person. You know, I, I put, I set my life towards achieving a goal, and I achieved it. Uh, if you, when I employ somebody like that, everybody wants to employ somebody like that. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, you go through, especially when you get into um, the ad oh, no, sorry, the advertising. Um, when you're looking for a career, after this, most of the athletes do have something yeah. behind the name. Um, it's just that experience, because I, I believe you can you can study and theoretically you can learn as much as you can, but um, your biggest learning curve is how you implement it um, within the working space. It's really that hands-on situation and thinking for yourself and, and being creative around that. So um, being an athlete as well, that's a, exactly the same that you go through when you can constantly bettering yourself year after year after year, new goals, new ways of doing stuff. There's stuff that works, um, stuff that you really need to... to um, um, experiment with as well without disrupting your whole entire um, process uh -huh. um, and then um, that is very very how can I say reusable in in um, a, a career afterwards whichever direction you go no absolutely but it's a basic trait of hard work um, if you're not a hard worker you, you're probably not going to build a, a very good career and that's the core fundamental of this or of an athlete or Absolutely. employing a sportsman. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 the end of the day. That's that's exactly what it is. And then we'll move on to number four, uh, the fourth. Uh, the villagers. <laughs> the village. Uh, the village is the next one we need to uh, chat about. Uh, man, those things, it looks like, it, you know, the villagers from what I've seen. Uh, a little bit elevator talk between the people in the villages <laughs> <laughs> you know the villages are so amazing looks like you're in a uh, an entire different city you know an entire Correct. different world almost uh the, the athletes uh get uh, to to spend time in you know you can see everybody like the the who's who's of athletes all rubbing shoulders all wanting one thing to take home the gold medal for their country I mean that's crazy. That's crazy. Imagine bumping into uh, Usain Bolt in the in the passage, or Correct. Or, or, or or what's his name, um, Neymar Jr. Yeah. Or you know it's 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 Roger crazy. Federer. Roger Federer. Roger Federer. LeBron James. Come on, huh? Yeah, those other guys. Um, and it's 
you've got the best athletes in the world. These are guys you see on the, the television if you're in South Africa, maybe highlights or... But mm. you, you never get to connect with them. And you're actually sharing the same um, blocked area, living in the same conditions as, as all of them. And, um, yeah, well, you, you do do get to mingle now and then too. So a lot of guys are, are looking forward to that. Um, and it's a really memorable and special that you classed with... Um, yeah, well, class with those those type of type of guys. Yeah, absolutely. Or roomed. Yeah, and I mean, you can see. I think that's always one of the the talking points uh, when it comes to host cities. You know, how how is the Olympic Village? How does it look? You know, are they staying in? I mean, you know, one of the athletes said, you know, being there and just staying focused is so difficult because you can eat McDonald's any time of the day. Uh, you can have whatever drink you want, whatever food. It's like you know, it's like you're on vacation, but hey. It's not a vacation. You got some work to do. Yeah, absolutely. We don't want to whip the crack, uh, the crack, the the whip on you again. You know, you better, you better uh, stay focused. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> yeah, winner, <na>. balega. Otherwise, the lucky, the luckiest you can be is being um, competing in the Olympics on day one, two, and three. Mm. And enjoying the, the village for the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but those yeah. those who are competing on the last, last, last days. Mm. I mean, it's, it's difficult, and that's what usually happens with athletics. Athletics tends to to happen uh, more on the uh, latter stages of the the competition. Yeah, so you have to refrain. Eh? Otherwise, you 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 will get to uh, the competition in ideal weight and leave there uh, slightly uh, round. Uh, round is not a, a bad uh, shape, mm -hmm. but in certain places. It uh, tends to hinder your performances, <laughs> so um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that to happen. But I mean, it's it's exciting. Uh, I can't wait to see what, how the village looks, uh, what the type of conditions the athletes are gonna leave, uh, live in. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a few guys to take some cameras in there, uh, take some snaps for us uh, to share with the rest of South Africa, uh, and we'll see we'll see um, how, how that looks. Yeah, definitely, cool man. Then the last one is a tattoo. Mm. Like, I can't wait to talk about this because uh, that was the most interesting one that that came out um, out of all of them. So obviously, um, you got the right to your body. Everyone has, and you can put on there whatever you want. But it seems that the Olympic tattoo is that's something that's uh, for Olympians. You don't you don't go mess around and put that little um, trademark on on your body unless you competed there. Oof. Yeah, and how many athletes have we seen? Like, so almost all of them. Akane has also got got his. Kurt. Uh, Kurt has his. Leon, I know Leon and Peter uh, contemplated that as well to to get the Olympic um, rings on them. Um, but throughout the US as well, you see a lot of guys who use it. Like of Brankis as well. Mm. I mean, I think it's 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 just that uh, it's 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 such a or let's call it a, a sacred symbol uh, in the sporting fraternity. Uh, where you know it's respected. I mean, to to try put it on um, those tattoos without actually being selected to be there, you know, it's risky. You know, you never know what's going to happen. But once you've you've gone there and once you've achieved those uh, that memorable you know uh, dream of, of competing at the Olympics, man, that is so well deserved. Uh, myself, uh, you know, not always a tattoo person, but maybe this one, this one, I would even, I think maybe I would consider as well. Would you do a tattoo? No, I, w I wouldn't do a tattoo. Personally, I won't. I don't have any tattoos. <laughs> I like I like the pain a little bit more, so you can uh, get one of those brands, <laughs> and then chase me around and see if you can catch me. <laughs> that heated irons, and if you can't catch me and I get it away, taken away from you, I'm coming off to you. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, yeah, no, uh, probably. Um, if I if I ever achieved that, um, I would consider it. But um, otherwise, I'll be <laughs> <don't know. laughs> yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, it is. It is one of the top five cool things uh, that Olympians, you know, um, talk about. You know, I would add number six. Hey, you know, hearing that uh, that anthem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, the anthem. Sheesh. Yeah, I know it won't make that, it. I know that, it won't that make tie, it. That ties in with getting a medal because otherwise you don't hear it. Not any medal, the gold. Oof. So they don't play three an anthems at one. You can you can see your flag get raised, but if it's in terms of anthems, it's only the gold that gets that privilege. Oof. The best in the world. Will we hear that anthem in 2021? 
Let's have a look. Okay. Uh, let's have a look at the team first. I'll give you the team. I'll give you the team. All right. Let's let's go. <laughs> let's go. go Man, I team. love the national anthems, Moody. You know, I sing the thing in the shower. Go see. You know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna get into it now, but. But we was there. Even at the soccer World Cup. Hey, <laughs> Balega Wena. <laughs> so here's the 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 the, the, the lineup, mm. ladies and gentlemen. Well, this is the the list that has been released that I've seen. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't select teams. We don't select teams. This is what we saw. We saw it on social media, like everybody else. Uh, so this is what we have seen. Um, in the the first name I've got here is Akani Simbini. He'll be running in the 100 meter. We've got Gift Leotela, the gift, the gift of the speed. The gift of speed. He's running in the 100. Why don't you share that, share that list on uh, share the temper screen? Let's have a look at it. All right, let's have a look at it. It's quite small. It's uh, quite small. Let me see. Let me go bigger. Let me go bigger. There we go. Ah, yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, let's move it across the other way. There we go. We've got a Connie Sambine. Yeah, we've got uh, oh. Gift Leotela in the 100 meters. We've got uh, Sean Maswangani. I mean, super exciting. Patu Chedzo. Maswangani. He's in the 100 and the 200, qualified for both. Clarence Munya is in the 200 meter. Uh, we've got a, a Asterix or a star on Anaso Jabodana. Um, oh, Anaso. Yeah. <laughs> I saw he posted on his, uh, on his Instagram. He said, I hope, hope this isn't a, 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 a prank. A prank. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, but I'm glad he's there, though. No, I mean, I'm glad he's there. So I think he qualified last year. Yeah, he, or is in, the, or is in the um, top, running, running to get invited based on the top, top yeah, performers. So the, the asterisk usually represents athletes that if, even if they don't have the automatic qualifier, mm-hmm. they might be ranked uh, in a position where they are able to. Um, to, to, to run at the Olympics or Olympic, be selected. Top 42 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, top 60. Like I remember Mark Mandela was talking about the magical top 60. Yeah. If you're top 60 in the world, you get uh, that opportunity as well. Cool. All right, let's move on. Wade okay. Van Nieker. Wade Van Nieker. A.K.A. Wade Van Nieker. He's, he's, he's also in the mix. Uh, he's back. Um, second uh, with uh, a 44-5. 5-6 on his opening race. Yeah, man. Wow. <laughs> and then he followed that up with a with a forty four point eight uh, six or seven. Yeah, in and super tough conditions. So Kanye also ran a race in super tough. Yeah, I think won. all of them did. Yeah, absolutely tough conditions, raining, mm. cold. Yeah, but the the guys are showing. You know, they were they they back winning races. Um, confidence is growing. Mm-hmm. Man, South Africans are gonna be a problem. Yeah, they're gonna be a problem. Uh, wait for Nika. We've got Zagiti Nene. Obviously, he ran that 45.03. Uh, that should put him top 60 in the in the world. Um, so he's in the team as well. Yeah. Tapelo Pora. Tapelo Pora as well. Glad for him. Let me fix that. He needs an yeah. H in there. Or am I, uh, like, uh, I wonder if Tapelo, he might be in the top 60, but he also might be in contention for the 4x400. Mm. Definitely will yeah. be in the 4x4. Four 4x4, by four. Four by four, yeah. Um, Who would you choose for the third one in the 4x4? Four four? Personally? Mm. And this is personally, no? It's my opinion. Yeah, I don't get personal. Be be <laughs> rational. <laughs> no, I'm just saying like this is not. I'm not saying based on anything. But well, I'm just don't saying be stupid. We've got <laughs> 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 Life Pile. I mean, the kid. The kid is. He's he's in. He's he's been in phenomenal shape. Mm-hmm. He's been consistent. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, but he's got a lot of years of running. A lot of years well. of running. I saw him uh, run against Wade too. I think I got that race here as well. Let me just have a look. Yeah, he was in the. We, we can get that to get to that in a sec. Okay, super. So, but no, well, what I was saying, he's 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 a great prospect for the future. Definitely, definitely. Is. So yeah, I've got him as well in there. I mean, Nene has been having a fantastic season, um, uh, as well as. Well, Ranti Dijale has been consistent. Yeah, Ranti. Like, Ranti is uh, one of the senior guys in the team as well. I think over the last um, three to four years, he's been the most consistent out of them. Yeah. them all. He's in the top four consistently. Absolutely. And also medaled a couple of times too in the SA Champs. Mm. And, um, you know, recently... Amazing. Yeah, amazing. Very amazing. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> amazing about this. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> 
but sure. Uh, recently also ran a 44-8 um, at, at Tux. So he's in form still, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, definitely somebody they can rely on. Pora, uh, let's not forget him. I mean, yeah. he's also in the team. A very uh, consistent runner. He's mm-hmm. steady. Whenever he r- runs, he's in top two, top three, or he wins. So and then we got Antonio O'Connor. That is uh, Antonio O'Connor in the 110 meter hurdles. Yep. Uh, he's in the mix. Uh, we've got Sokis, Sokwakana Zazini, uh, 400 meter hurdles. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the long jump, we've got uh, Cheswell Johnson. Boing, boing, boing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I like that guy. He is, he's exciting as well. Uh, Raswell Samai in the long jump. Yay, two. Yep, two long jumpers. Damn. Damn. I knew that was coming. <laughs> 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 and then uh, Rocco, Rocco van Ruyen, uh, a.k.a. Is Big Zulu. Uh, that's his nickname, believe it or not. Big uh, Zulu. Big Zulu. He's in the mix for the Javelin. Javelin, great. Uh, we've got t- two shot putters as well. Jason and Carl, yeah, they're, both, they're both qualified, so great on them. Yeah. Happy for them. Stephen McCocker in the marathon. Yeah, Desmond Mokubu. How do you uh, M- pronounce Mokubu. Mokubu. I knew yeah. I didn't want to... So I stopped at Mok, <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got El Roy Galant. Yeah, I look forward to watch him race as well there. Uh, so he's got, gone a track Olympian and now he's going to be a, a road Olympian too. Yeah, remember no, that. I ran, I ran against El Roy. Was it, he's, he's here older than me. I ran 800s against him when I was in 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 high school as well. That guy was quick. He had some great leg speed. I think he also went 149 as a senior in high school. Um and then I was a, and I was in the marathon, so a uh, super cool athlete. Yeah, is is that a very good transition? I mean, five thousand meter SA record holder. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what the year he qualified for the Olympics uh, down in Rio, Rio de Janeiro. Um, so that, that that he's he's definitely an exciting athlete. Also ran a two, I think two eleven at that Kila- Kilarni uh, racetrack. They ran a, a marathon, forty two kilometer at a racetrack. Uh, well, w- around the racetrack continuously. Yeah, loops around the track. Um, amazing concept. Uh, Kilani v- one. Yeah. Or is, is it the Kailami? No, Kilani. It's uh, it's, okay. it's, it's it's not. It's in uh, Cape Town. If okay, I'm not mistaken. cool. Uh, so, well, let me say Western Province to be mm-hmm. safe. So they ran a whole marathon there. That was exciting. I mean, we never seen anything like this in South Africa, you know. And this race, uh, Makmawet, is going to be a big one. In the future for South Africa, um, it's going to bring a lot of athletes because, I mean, who, who doesn't want to see fast times? And that's what has been done a lot uh, during COVID um, with n- people not wanting to run in open spaces. But this is fast. You know, it, it's, it's, you, you get to pace yourself much easier because it's consistent the whole time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's move on to the walkers. Uh, we've got Wayne Sneeman. He's doing the 20 kilometer race walk. And then we've got uh, Mark Mandel with the Asterix over there. So he's also uh, in what the... What does he have with the Asterix? Also didn't qualify and he's in the top 60. Yes, so that is correct. I see. What's it? His third Olympics currently. Uh, Mark Mandel should be his third Olympics. Correct. Yeah, pretty cool. Because uh, I read an article, or not wrote, read an article this this morning where he said he's going for the, for the medal mm. this time around. Yeah, I mean, 50 kilometer is it's a marathon. They're walking a marathon. Um, fantastic stuff. Uh, so it's it's going to be interesting to see what he's doing. I mean, he's in the shape of his life, you know, and uh, just a few, uh, you know, last year with COVID, he was contemplating whether he should even still carry on uh, uh, walking. And then it comes out 2021, guns blazing, mm. breaking SA records, African records. Um, I mean, Mark is a... Good example of consistency over the years. All right, let's continue. What's next? Yeah, so t- okay, we need to have a look at the the ladies as well. But I see. I just want to say hi to a couple of people. Yeah. Finally, with because uh, we had that internet glitch earlier, um, I can finally see see inst- the interaction on on social media. So we got Mama Wandila and Stephen Thompson. So hi to you guys. Uh, Mama Wandila is saying Samaya is go- going to do great. As well as Mashman Young is amazing that he's qualifying for both um, the 100 and 200. And um, big Akani Sambina fan. <laughs> um, she, she says he's he's very um, consistent. So, uh, yeah, that's awesome com- comment. So, Pinky as well, how you doing? Henry Makane, how you doing too? So, how are you guys watching? Yeah, welcome guys. Thanks for joining in. 
uh, to our podcast. This is episode number two of No Sweat. <laughs> 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 All right, let's continue with that uh, list. So the four by one hundred meter men's race, Woo, relay. Man, we we <laughs> we had a, a, an exciting. What do you call that? Is it exciting? The right word. We had a. A hot topic last week uh, about the yeah. 4 by 100 So have meters. a look at the guys that's in tension here. So uh, I, I note if you have a look at the 400, those final guys in the 400 meters, uh, it doesn't really uh, make up a complete 400. Um, but let, let's, if you can just scroll up a little bit more. Okay. Let's have a look at that. So 100, we, we can see that you've got Akane already in there. Uh -huh. You've got Gift. Uh -huh. You've got uh, Sean. Sean. Um, Clarence Munyai and Wade Finnecke, that's five. Mm. Um, so my question is, that those are the five that they're going, going with. Um, what about Tando Dlodlo? Um, yeah, so uh, are they going to rely on Anasa Jobutwana um, for him to, to pull through, um, as well as one of the reserves? I'd like to know that. And then who's the fourth and the fifth guy on the 400 meters? Um, well, the fourth and the fifth guy. So, if let's just go through the the four hundred meter list, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, four hundred meter runners. I don't know how the team looks, but we've got uh, wait for Nikar over here. We've got Zagiti Nene, Tapelo Pora. I mentioned uh, somebody like. Uh, yeah, so you've mentioned them. Yes. Um, it's just uh, who's the last two guys? Mm, that we don't know. I, I mentioned Ranti as somebody that could be well fit for the team. Uh, where is um? Then there's obviously the the likes of. Um, Derek Mokaleng, he's in the United States of America. I wonder if um, he's, if he's going to be part of the plans as well. Um, Life Pele, uh, we mentioned as well. So it'll be interesting to see uh, which four uh, would be the four that will end up yeah. uh, doing the fighting for. Let's just have a, look, have a look. Says, uh, you've got Life Pele here uh -huh. and Zakitin in, uh, in in this race. Um, so if you can just change to my to my screen, so this is the 400 meter that was run um, in Lucerne. Uh, I know in its wet conditions, but uh, these are three South Africans um, competing for for the spots in the four by four. Well, we know Wade would be in, but um, yeah, just so just have a look at the the last little bit. I just want to make sure my sound's turned on. First time he so Wade's out seconds. like always. The first 200 meter flying. Starting to get back there you to his old self. Can he rediscover like he was something like the form of five life. years it ago? Is life. <laughs> 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 Perhaps a little bit too much There's to expect. But behind, look, we can see him moving behind, now. He's well past Norwood. Norwood. And don't forget, Norwood fifth of the US Championships. Mm. And it's a one-man race at the moment, although Van Niekerk did struggle up the home straight in Madrid. But then he's hanging on that strong. little bit better here. Yeah, 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 finishing yeah, strongly for Switzerland. Than he, than he but then, in lane three, Wade Van Nieker clocks 44.89. 44, yeah, 40, 44 eight, nine, that, that's good in this conditions. Uh -huh. If, and you'll see just the, by rewinding a little bit, 44-45 uh, was the meeting record. Um, if there wasn't wind and um, no rain, I think that would have been under threat. Absolutely. There was yeah, a I negative uh, headwind. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Wade is looking. I mean, he's looking promising again. He's looking. He's looking like he's 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 back. Definitely, definitely. I think he's back and and solidly in contention. He's looking focused. He's looking smooth again. You can see that they're working on on parts of his races. This race compared to the race we he ran in uh, Madrid, more conservative. He was flying out of the. The 300 meter mark, I mean, even up to 350, he was uh, killing Zombrano. <laughs> Zombrano yeah. just came through strong. So it shows mm. he's, uh, they're working on the race. So this, was, this one looked like they were, they were executing the, the second half of the race. Like you said, it looked strong. I guess I want to boost this. Where is Zombrano from? Brazil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's from Ecuador or Colombia. Yeah, I want to boost this, <laughs> this podcast. Uh, so no, not that I have a dislike for him. Um, I like all all runners. Uh, that's a fighter, and um, was Zambrano, yeah, yeah. Zambrano, Zambrano is a fighter, but <laughs> man, the way he went on afterwards. Uh, like, firstly, <laughs> <laughs> you're running against Wade van Niekerk. Um, anyone can beat anyone and at any day. All right, um, anyone can have great days, off days. Um, hopefully, most athletes are consistent, but. 
this guy has come back from one major knee injury <laughs> and has been running since since pretty much last year. And this is his first international 400, if I'm, I'm speaking under correction. Uh, so you, you managed to catch him in the last um, 50 meters and then now it's the best best day of your entire life. Um, so yeah, that's that's Zambrano with uh, the gold around his neck and the 400s on his ears. Um, <laughs> but I, I can't wait for the final at the Olympics. Um, so we can just set the record straight. Oh, are you going to throw the whipping comedy? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> 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 anyway, <laughs> anyway, yeah, but no disrespect. Um, to Zombrano. I, I just mean he, he should have taken, taken, just uh, pulled himself towards himself a little bit more there. But um, yeah, let's let's wait for Olympics. <laughs> It's uh, the South African heart in me beating properly. Yeah, okay, yeah, proudly South African, you mm. know, always begging our, our South African athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, exciting uh, race, uh, that one, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good, you know, if, if, if the athletes are going to bring out the best out of South African athletes, you know, we're always happy. But the big stages, like you say, um, that's where it matters most. And Correct. then let's get to the ladies. Okay, let's run through it. We've got Wenda now, 400 hurdles. That's her third Olympics. Mm-hmm. Mm? No, second. Second, great. Yes, okay, yes, yes, yes. so that's when the second athletics. I'm glad she qualified. Absolutely. Um, it w- would have been great to see Taylor Built or um, what's a Zane uh, Van der Vault. Yeah, Zane also join her. Um, unfortunately, time run up on them. Yeah. Um, Dominic Scott, five thousand and ten thousand. Congrats to that boy. She's been been a superstar and also ambassador for South Africa, even though I'm married to an American. Um, we can be pretty proud of her um, and what she's achieved. So th- those are su- super difficult distances. So I'm glad, glad she made it in both. Custer fell short in the, the 5,000. Uh. Um, but yeah, she's proven herself a, a real pro- professional in those distances. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at Dominique, if you just follow her f- over the past four years, man, so, I mean, she's, I think this is her fifth year as a pro. And every single uh, year, Dominique runs PBs. Mm-hmm. She breaks national records, especially indoor. Mm-hmm. She's improving. Like I don't, they've got that formula where every single year, some record or PB must fall, and that's amazing. You know what I mean? And I mean, we we we've had chats about uh, having professional female athletes, you know, as examples for for a lot of the female athletes in South Africa that uh, tend to disappear. You know, and th- that's the type of people they're going to look up to to say, listen, you know what, I can still, I can become a professional. And I'm by professional, I mean bread and butter on the table, uh, make a living through being a talented sports mm. man or woman. Mm. So very good example, like you mentioned. And then let's move on to um, Gerda Stein. Mm-hmm. Another, oh, another brilliant. She started running so late in her life. <laughs> now she's <laughs> Olympian. Man, as a record holder in the marathon. I mean... I mean, I, I wouldn't mind putting money on her to do something at the at the Olympics. She's that type of person. Um, well, man, I wouldn't mind putting some money on her vet as well. Of course, man. The vet's got that world world best, or I think it was second best eventually. But um, that world was record. a dominant performance from being pace to, to <laughs> dominator <laughs> on the same day. Man. That's crazy. You know, they say, hey, can you pace us to 30-something uh, Ks and then you end up uh, breaking the w- the world record. Yeah. I mean, that <laughs> that just shows the type of... I mean, she's tough. Don't get me Super wrong. Super tough. She's tough. Tough as nails. She's also got a couple of Olympics. Yeah, yeah. she's. I think this will be a second one. Um, she qualified for Rio uh, in the marathon as well. Yeah. Uh, she wasn't very happy. So I think uh, what she's going to be going for now is to be happy. So she's going to go there and fight. Um, you know, obviously married to an Olympic legend, uh, LJ Fansail. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got two children. We're going to be watching out for them. Uh, we need to start putting cameras on them. Now we're ready to see what's going to happen uh, with them on the track if they choose it. <laughs> uh, but uh, interesting. I mean, and that's the team. That's what we've got here. We don't know um, who's going to be in the 4x1 or 4x4, so there might be some extra names. Um, I think it's up to ASA or Sescock uh, to put the list through. Uh, am I correct? Mm. So yeah, so I know there's rumors of a late, a, a late um, submission, um, but I'm sure we will get that sort of amicably. 
All right. So yeah, that's that's the team. It's an exciting team. Um, it's a fresh team. It's good to see youngsters. I mean, we've got. I mean, these guys are young. Clarence Wunya, Sean Maswangani, gift. Let's not forget. You know, Clarence has been in the game for long. This guy is young. Mm. He is young. Gift is young. These guys are. It's their time. You know, soon they'll be having to carry the, uh, the 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 torches from the likes of. Uh, some of our stars that are in this team and mm -hmm. those who have come before them. So that's good to see. Um, likes of Cheswell Johnson, also up and coming youngster in the long jump. Uh, Zazini, obviously a youngster there. So, man, I think it's a, it's a good balance. I would, the only thing I would personally like to see more is, is more females in the team. That, that, is, that is the only thing I would personally uh, like to see. And, man, so much more has to be uh, done uh, for that, you know, um, so that there, there's more women in the team. What do you think about that? Yeah, dude, it's, uh, people need to qualify. That's it. That's it, point blank. So um, I think we all want to see the whole world or the whole South Africa oh. post three people in, in each and every event have a super, super set of trials. And um, similar to what America has, first three goes. Because you got four or five people that's already dipped on the qualification. Um, is our, uh, do we have that depth? Um, probably not. Definitely not right now. But do we have that depth in the hundred seven years ago? No, we didn't. So exactly. Now we we've got three guys, almost four or five in contention. What if all healthy, we would have had about five or six yeah, yeah. Well, for what, that three spots. What do you think? Do, do you think that uh, that Olympic trial system? Would work for South Africa? I mean, I, I know it's... Uh, no, it won't. Yeah, I, I also personally don't think for... for Not right now. Yeah, You've yeah. got to build the depth. The only way you, you're going to build the depth is to continue to invest in your, your coaching. Mm. Um, b great coaches make great athletes. Mm. And then um, your talent identification um, through through these coaches. Um, how do you nurture those those youngsters? Because they're still, still fragile. And having the di diversity that we that we see in South Africa, um, not everyone has. Uh, how can I say? Not everyone's in in the same position to to achieve. Um, running is one that, that anyone that's fit can can have a great race. But um, there's so much more after after um, high school that you've got to go through to to make that happen. And there's really a gap for somebody to get into this market. And well, I'm saying this market to get in to create um, jobs for athletes and um, push them through to the Olympics, create some depth, ah. some support. Yeah, the support is needed. Um, Definitely needed. It's probably one of the most important things. And that's why, like, that's why I think even when you wrote the article, because you say, uh, you know, they, they, there's a change. It seems there's going to be a change heading towards seeing athletes get more opportunities, get the right support. Yeah, if you take Precious as the example. And it wasn't just the, just about pre yeah, Well, yeah. it's about Precious, yes. But how quick did they identify guys that can help them get there? Ryan Pachlele. Right? Exactly. So they, they got these guys to, to work with them mm. um, through that race. And yeah, it's, a, it's difficult to qualify the Olympics for the Olympics running by yourself. You can't do it. No, you can't. And he did it. So, uh, give him a quick race. Put him in, the, put him in that sub thirteen minute races where you really can sit behind someone. Yeah, uh, different he's, story. He's gonna do great. I mean, Wait. he's been driving. He's, you know, like you, have you have you seen? You know, you watch his races. You can see this man is grafting. He's literally stride for stride. This is something that him and his coach and big ups to coach Hendrik Ramala. I mean, he's got some exciting uh, ath ath athletes. He's got Desmond Mohobu, who's in the team coming from uh, Ramallah. Group. I don't know who's there? And what's that all mean? We've also got um, a comment. <laughs> <That's why>. <laughs> <laughs> Please update us with the list of the four by four when you guys get it. Okay, that's a comment that came. Okay, that, we definitely do that. that. Created that signal. <laughs> Dominic Scott, dope races. Uh, Beke le Beke. I don't know what that means. <laughs> week after week, back and back. Back and back. Yeah. So de yeah. Uh, shout out to, to to Mamiki. She's in the mix. Uh, she's uh, she's, uh, she's uh, interacting, interactive, uh, and uh, enjoying this chat. Uh, thanks for that. We're gonna keep it going. 
Um, so we, yeah, we'll bring that list to you as, yeah, next week. That's all we're going to be talking about. You know, that's the focus for next week. We're focusing on the team. You know, we can't wait for that uh, official final team to come out. Yeah, the, I, I thought it would have been out by now. But I think they're, they're going to do a final send-off or a final announcement. I want to know the 4x1 and the 4x4. That's the only thing that's pondering. But I think the, the one that's out now is pretty much 90. I think that's almost 99% of the team. Mm. Um, we just, yeah, we're just pretty much waiting to see who will be in the relays, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the cutoff is, is out. So Mark Mandel and everybody who's got the Asterix, they're going to the Olympics. You know? Mm-hmm. So the only thing that's left is just to see if there's going to be an additional athlete coming from a relay team or is what we see here, is that what's going to run? Uh, yeah, it could correct. possibly be. Uh, so that's why I said this This is probably pretty much 99.9% of the team. There mm-hmm. might be maybe one or two athletes that aren't on this list. Yeah, cool. So, yeah. All right, Tim, so we got nine minutes left. Yeah. Um, I think you, you got a... I got a, I got a what? You got a game. All right. Hit me. Hey. <laughs> 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 right, what's your man. game, man? What's up with this? All right. Uh, so the game we're going to be playing is called Know Your Records. All right. Know so records, what I'm going to okay. do is I'm going to ask you a few questions. Don't Please don't put this up. I don't want people to see what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to test you, uh, Smitty. N- just me. Let, let's uh, put it like, uh, no. please, everyone that's that's yeah, watching, that's watching you, this. But if you're watching, guys. If you're watching, please help me out. <laughs> All right. Save him. Uh, Mamiki, I know you're there. Save this man. Save me. So whoever's watching, uh, save him. But it's easy, right? So I'm going to do this. I want to see how, how many of these you can answer. I'm going to give you one minute. One minute? No, That's no, make it make it one, 150. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you 150 mm-hmm. um, to name as many athletes. So I'm, I'm not going to go further than the 800 meter mm-hmm. for this segment. We'll, we'll continue. We've okay. got many, many more weeks coming up. Very so easy. This is easy, you see? If I got to get it wrong... You, you, you get it wrong, we just move on. We just move on. Okay, it's time, remember? So your, your fight is against the, the, the clock. So you have to name... I just want the name. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say the event. Some of, the, some of it is tricky. Well, there's one tricky one. I'm just going to say the event. You give me the name and the surname. Okay. The name and the surname. Okay, right? surname doesn't as matter. Cl- as close as I can. Just surname give me the name. Or name. Yeah, just name or surname. Right, one of the let's two. G- let's rock and roll. Okay, okay. And it's all about the records. It's all about the records. Okay. So, I'm starting my time. World records. No, 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 no. no. These are South African records. Mm. South African records. Good Lord. Okay, so it's going to be tricky. Mm-hmm. Okay, getting to you. Starting the time in three, two, one. Let's go. Okay, this one is tricky. 100 yards. 100 yards. What name are uh, wrong. Let's move on. So, so that's Simon Machauke in uh, Simon Machauke in the hundred yards. Yeah, hundred cool. meters. Hundred meters at Kone Sembine. Okay, hundred and fifty meter. Hundred and fifty meters at Kone Sembine and and also Jobodwana. Correct. Uh, two hundred meter. Yeah, yeah boy. boy. <laughs> <laughs> two hundred. Let's go. Let's uh, go. Uh, Munyai. Okay. Mm? That's right. Uh, two hundred meters straight. Two hundred meters straight. Uh, Wade. Okay, that's good. 300 meter, 300 <laughs> meter. What? 300 meter. Wade. Okay, 400 meter. Wade. 600 meter. Ooh. Rainer van Rensburg, Andre Olivier. Correct. Uh, <laughs> 800 meter. 800 meter is equal to Peng. Okay, now we're moving to the woman. 100 meter. <laughs> Geraldine Play. Karina Horn. Second. I, oh, yeah, she is. Oh, 200 yeah. meter. This one's hard. Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, if it's uh, if it, uh, de Klerk, uh in the 300 meter, come on. Yeah, 400 meter. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. <laughs> 400 meter. Ah, uh, 600 meter. Caster Semenya. 800 meter. Caster Semenya. <laughs> give me the horn, give me the horn. <laughs> well done, man. Well done, well done, well done, well done. How do I do? 
You did well. So no, <laughs> well, <laughs> you did well. Pat on the back. Cheers. How many? Uh, in total, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You got twelve out of twelve out of uh, fourteen. Fourteen. Got two wrong. Twelve out of fifteen. Fifteen. No. Can you believe that? You got the two hundred meter wrong. Yeah. For women. Uh, you got the 100 meter wrong for women. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. Yeah, I think that's it. Huh? Wait, yeah, then you got everything else right. <laughs> no, no, no. You got the 100 yards wrong as well. Not, yeah. Uh, Simon Machak. Yeah, but well done. Well that's done. Well done. Cool. I don't know about that. All right. Um, hit me with the outro uh, uh, music there. With the outro music for, for the game. Done. For the game. For the game. For the game. For the game. Who's got that outro music? Your little sponsor. Hey. Oh, <laughs> no, your no, your We're doing Ghana records next week. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you've heard it uh, straight from the two horses' mouths uh, Irvin Schmidt and Timber Madima. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. Apologies about the connection challenges. Yeah, that's all. It really dampens the mood sometimes, but hey, we're here. We, we're going to keep uh, going, it's going to keep getting better. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This is No, no sweat. sweat. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you again next week. Next week we're dealing with Olympics. You don't want to miss out on that topic. Uh, like, subscribe, and then we'll see you next yeah. week. Adios, amigos. Subscribe, YouTube, go, like. <laughs> Come on, yo. <laughs> <laughs>